Hello and welcome. Welcome to the uh, Let Reach webinar. Uh, I want to make sure we've had a little bit of technical difficulties just getting started here. I want to make sure you guys can hear me okay. So if you can hear me, please just put a one in the chat box. Okay, good. I'm getting some feedback. Good. Um, if there's any bit of a delay, please just let me know. Um, we want to make sure you guys can hear us okay. So I'm getting some ones, so that's looking good. Okay, good. Looking good. It looks like we're only having the problems on our end, so we're going to deal with a little bit of a delay and just talk and, and trust that you guys can hear us okay. As we get going here, just let me know if you're having any, any audible issues, and, um, and we'll see what we can do to fix that. Looking good. Okay, great. Uh, again, we'd like to just welcome you. Uh, we're going to give you a little introduction to Vipple today. Um, you're going to actually get to hear from him. He's going to be speaking and doing a demonstration, which I'm sure you guys will love. We received a lot of questions, and we actually had to had to talk about how are we going to best handle this because we have a lot of questions that we want to get to. We want to make sure that we're covering everyone from the beginner users of LetReach and, and push notifications through the intermediate and all the way to the advanced levels. So what we've decided to do is in this, uh, in this webinar, we're going to be talking to you about usability of LetReach and kind of the, the best practices in using LetReach, getting you right into the dashboard and talking about that. In a, in, a, in a following webinar, which we're going to hold next week, we're going to talk more about the marketing and selling side of LetReach because we really wanted to just kind of separate things up to give you the most value. So both are value-based webinars, both teaching you about best practices and just kind of separating them up into functionality of LetReach as opposed to marketing and selling. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to start by just giving you um, an introduction to, to the to, to basically what LetReach is. And LetReach is, of course, push notifications marketing tool. So there are over 1 million subscribers with 1,500 plus active business users. So we, we have a lot of businesses using LetReach and have been using it for quite a while. And over 2 million notifications are delivered in a day. So this is not a new system. This is something that's a very seasoned system. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. Also, we're seeing up to 30% click-through rates, and of course, LetReach is backed by India's largest affiliate network called B Commission. On the right here, you can see some of the businesses that are currently using LetReach, and that just gives you an idea of, of the businesses that are currently using it. Here's the team. This, the team looks like the slides taking a little bit to load. I'm going a little ahead. You should see that slide popping up in just a second here. Uh, this is the team of LetReach. I'm going to wait just a minute to make sure that slide's popped in. There we go. Okay, so this is LetReach. Right here in the front is Vipple, and then you've got his team. Vipple, why don't you go ahead and say hello. I'd like to introduce you all to Vipple, and tell us a little bit more about your team here on the slide. Hey, hello, everyone. Um, so you thank you, Kimberly, for this amazing shout-out. Um, do you guys hear me? Kimberly, do you hear me well? I can hear you just fine. If you guys can hear Vipple, just give a yes. There we go. We're getting some yeses. That's good. Everyone can hear you, Vipple. Go ahead. Cool. Sure. Hello, everyone. So I am Vipple. I... Okay, I'm getting it's a little choppy. We'll work with it. I know. Go to webinar has been not working really fine today. I even I had trouble getting onto this webinar. Anyway, uh, as long as it's working fine, it should be fine. Okay, so I run this company called LetReach. With LetReach, what we have always wanted to build is a marketing platform that helps you reach your users well and help you drive conversions. Uh, we started over a year back as a startup. We started this SaaS platform. Uh, in about four months of starting up, we launched as an early beta platform, then moved to raise funding from India's other separate network, B Commission. Uh, Started as a team of three, then, and now we are a team of almost seven. Uh, so just that, and been working since then to push LetReach as the best web push notification solution out there.
Now you can believe that. You may, you may take over now. Perfect. Thank you so much for that introduction, Bipal. We're going to come back here for just a minute as we go over just a couple more. Um, now that you've had a chance to hear from Bipal, we're going to turn that over to him now. Okay, thanks, Bipal. Sorry, we're doing a little bit of a delay. Sorry, guys and gals, for the, for the delay and the choppiness. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to come back here and tell you a little bit about the onboarding, delivery, and post-delivery. Uh, because we have to have some questions about that we wanted to cover. Now, the onboarding, so that, so that the beginners who are in this webinar can get an idea, the onboarding is the part where people are actually coming onto your LetReach system. So they are actually getting onto your LetReach program through being on your list, okay? Whether they're coming to your website, um, having good traffic to your website is key because that's how you're going you're gonna to more effectively get people to opt in. So just to stress that the opt-ins, there are six different opt-ins that you can choose from. And a couple of people have been asking, well, how's the, e how's the best way to get people opted in? And there, there, are, there are some best practices. A lot of them are centered around giving value in order to get people to opt into your list. So as you're using LetReach, remember that when you're getting people to opt into your list, you can select whichever, whichever look that you want, the look and feel, you can customize that as you want. And we've found that it's great when you do customize, you can put your own picture in there, you can put your brand logo in there, and that is a, a great way to get people opted in to your list. Now, We'll go through these items in the demo. Okay, yeah, we, we will go through those a, a little bit more. There's also the the, na the native opt-in, is it called? Mm -hmm. The native opt-in, we've also um, been able to see that the opt-ins are actually pretty high on that one. That's the highest converting opt-in. And we suspect that it may be because it looks very very standard, maybe like it's a computer message. So you may want to take that into account as well. And do we encourage you to do your own testing to see what works best for your brand because what works for X company's brand is not necessarily the best thing for you. So depending on which niche you're in, whether you're in the restaurant business, whether you own a car shop, whether you are a coach or an, an online marketer, uh, you're going to want to um, see what works best for you. So that's just a little bit about the opt-in. Let's go on to delivery. So for delivery, this is all talking about sending out your notifications. We have had some questions about best practices in sending notifications, and we will get more into that as we switch over to Vipple shortly to go through the demo. But just keep in mind that with LetReach, you do have unlimited notifications. So you can send as many as you want, and again, you can add your custom image and this also comes to when you're, when you're scheduling and sending your notifications, coming up with the best strategies and the best methods for you to communicate with your audience the best. Um, keeping in mind that the RSS automation also allows you to, to, se to send out notifications from your, your actual website. So some of you may be implementing that. Um, and we'll talk more about that again as we get in over to Bethel shortly. And then the last part is the post delivery. So we're talking about performance management. And this is where, and Vipple will talk more about this, we get into notification delivery stats, so we'll go over that. Vipple will be explaining those stats and how to, how to effectively use them. And then also your reports, which we'll see in the demo, will show how that, that can happen, and your A-B testing. Now A-B testing is a, a very important concept that if you're new to um, this type of uh, marketing tool, you want to pay attention to the A-B testing because this is where you really can drill down, find out what's working for you and what's not. So if you haven't yet begun to implement A-B testing, I strongly encourage you to do so and we will talk more about that as we get over to Vipal. Okay, then we can... So we're going to go ahead, uh, Vipal, with that little introduction, we're going to go ahead and turn the time over to you and everyone give, uh, give him your attention.
extension and Bipple is going to go right into a demo uh, going onto the dashboard and showing LetReach uh, real time to you. So uh, Bipple, it's, it's all about you now. Okay, th this will take a couple of seconds before we uh, switch over, so just bear with us. Cool. I've accepted the screen, screen? Yeah. request. Let me know when you guys see my screen. Perfect. <coughs> yeah. I see. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, we're good to go. Yeah, Bibble, we see your screen. And we've got people commenting you're seeing it. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to be giving you guys a quick demo on the LitReach dashboard, taking you through every of the modules that we have, and then let you know some of the use cases while we uh, talk to this. Uh, one of the ways we should do, we should look forward to doing this is by keeping it really interactive, which means that if you have any questions, you can just post through the questions, and Kimberly can read through those questions once I'm done uh, moving across that particular module. So at, at the moment, I am uh, in a demo dashboard that we have built for demonstration purposes. So on the dashboard screen, what you see is an overall stats for the summary that you have. In the overall stats, you see the total number of subscribers that you have attained so far, then the campaigns, number of campaigns that you have run, and the number of views that you have generated over all of the notifications that you have sent, and the clicks that you have generated over all of these notifications. When you drill down, what you see is a subscriber growth graph um, on a daily basis. You see a plain line over here because we haven't really inputted any demo data for the last few days, and hence you see a plain graph over here. Then when you go down, what you see is the average stats for the last 90 days. So you see the average stats for the your subscribers, the notification views, and the notification clicks. What this helps you to do is to measure the performance over the last 90 days on what's been happening with Retreat. What it also helps you to do if you're using NetReach for your clients is to deliver the performance for them and tell them and actually show them that how uh, the notification clicks have been increasing or decreasing, how the views have been generating. Uh, and what it helps you to do is actually justify your performance delivery with your clients. And then very, very quickly what you see is the last send notification, which lets down the notification, the last notification that you have sent and gives you a quick around, around the stats that you've had so far. And then what you see are the last few campaigns that you have run so far, and the total views, clicks, and the CTR percentage that you have gotten on these of the campaigns. Now let me take you first through these settings, because this is the first step that you need to go through, and one of the most critical steps as well. Um, in the settings, what I have in the first are the general settings. In the general settings, you have the site name, so this is the site website name that you should be adding. So for example, if I run an e-commerce store by the name uh, shopifycart.com and if my shop's name is Shopify Cart, I could perhaps have the name as Shopify Cart on this site name because this is the site name that's going to display up on almost every other thing. Then it's the site URL that you have used to create an account with LetReach, the API key, the API secret key, which is what that you get into if you do an API integration and then the logo file that you should be having of uh, as your logo. Then you click on save. Then the next that you have are the onboarding settings. Uh, so in the onboarding setting what you have is the list of opt-ins that you could deploy on your website. So what these opt-ins do are these opt-ins are actually like layouts that we deploy on a website which requests your visitor uh, to, to subscribe to web push notifications from your website. What we have in here are actually six styles that you could deploy on the website um, and all of these styles are highly customizable and can be deployed in real time. So to do any of these, what you do is just click on any of these and you can just customize uh, these in real time. So you say this website and you see a live preview right across the same. And you can also change the background color, the text color and the button background and you can enter in any of your uh, background code as well. So for example, I could be adding my hex code and I could just press save to save it. I could also disable the opt-ins on mobile or just remove branding. Right. 
Vipal, I'm going to interrupt just real quick because we are getting a question that I feel is quite important. And that mm -hmm. is that uh, where the API keys, because there have been some other questions about where do the folks get the API keys on that previous screen? So this is the API key that you have. What you need to do is uh, if you want to do a, a, a custom or an advanced use case level of implementation, for example, if you what you want to do is if you want to send notifications out to an individual subscriber among the thousands of subscribers that you want may have, and if you want to do it basis some trigger, for example, if uh, again if I run an e-commerce website or if I run a coupons or card website, and and what I want to do is I want to send a push notification out automatically anytime when someone looks at a coupon but doesn't really claim that deal or doesn't really claim that offer. Right, so the way you can do it is by integrating the API of LetReach with your system. And the best way to do it is to contact the support up there, tell them the use case, tell them the, the use case that you want to implement. And API key that you find in here in the general section is going to be the actual bridge between LetReach and your use case. Right? So this is the API key which helps you to connect to, to LetReach API, validate your request, and get your data be processed. I hope this answers the Perfect. question. Perfect. So, so just to clarify, the API key is something generated by LetReach and they're going to use it when implementing on a program. Yes, so anytime when a user would want to do an API integration, the API key and the API secret key would enable them to communicate with LetReach servers um, and actually get the thing done. Um, and for anyone so who is wanting API to do any integration, they could contact support. It's and I'm sure they'll be prompt. Okay, so the API key is going to be specific to their account. Yes, the API key is going to be specific to their account. Obviously, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Cool. And it does, just to, just to confirm, well, it does populate on its own, right? So that is in there for everyone's account. It's specific to their account. It's their own, and it does self-populate. Anyone can do an API integration, um, and the API secret key helps them to communicate with their trade server. Right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we were on, on the onboarding. Um, so what you can do is actually <coughs> use the different tabs to actually see what kind of layout works well for your audience. Typically for, for websites we see the dialog pop style working really well and the bottom scroll for opt-in also working really well. For a website which is focused around delivering good user experience, I usually recommend them to use the native style opt-in because it's a single click opt-in and it also helps delivering a good UX for the end user. Right, so what it does is it helps you to deploy a native opt-in even for the non-SSL websites, right? So even when your website would not have SSL, it, they would be see, shown uh, an opt-in like this. Then what we have is something called sub-opt-in. What sub-opt-in does is, uh, if anyone gets to see this uh, opt-in up on the screen and if they choose to not to allow notification at that moment and if they click on do not allow, we certainly do not want that user to be shown uh, and often again when he refreshes the page or when he visits the website again because this can kind of intrusive for the for the user. So what we do in that case is we show them a sub opt-in which is kind of a sudden opt-in uh, which comes in from the sidebar from the website and request them to show uh, to, to allow notifications from that website. And as a web marketer what you can do from this dashboard is you can change the copy, you can change the background or you can change the text background and you can just press on save and it's going to be deployed in real time again. The next thing that you have is the child window. So this is the intermediary subscription confirmation window. But the, the time it really pops up is when someone clicks on the allow button. Um, and what this option lets you to do is it helps, it helps you to customize this window in totality so you could keep your copies as uh, intriguing as possible. What I usually recommend everyone out there is to have copies in here something like um, uh, please confirm the notifications above so as to subscribe successfully to our web push notifications and we hope to send you latest updates and offers as push notifications. I mean 
you could you could frame it and you can personalize this basis your visitor types but ideally it should be something that helps them to know that you will be serving value over the list and would not spam them right, so you could hey, change Nicole, the title sorry quick question about SSL because we do have a question about that uh, with SSL is it one click with all the different onboarding styles so we're no. speaking SSL only no so typically for anyone to subscribe to WebPush successfully from a website, they have to click on the allow button on an opt-in like the way you see in the in, in the screencast right now, right? So this is the confirmation modal that comes in from the browser. It's a browser dialog. So even when the website is a SSL, what we can do if you want it to be done through one of the layouts, if someone clicks on allow button, uh, the native SSL will come up right from the website without popping the window up but but if but if you want to use the layouts it has to be two click okay great right? thank you uh, question about the legality coming to the child window is uh -huh. there is there any legal wording or is there there any legality about the wording of that notification and the child window no there's as such no legality involved but Usually we recommend again. I'm, I'm saying this. Usually we recommend all of the users to 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 write in copies and to frame copies in the child window basis the kind of visitors that they have. So for example, if I am a offers or a deals website, what I would want to 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 put in the copy in here is that we look forward to updating you with push notifications um, and we'll be sending you offers, but we'll make sure that we will not spam you. So what it helps your visitor to do, it, it helps your visitor and actually encourages your visitor to subscribe to your notifications. And because you're telling them upfront that you're not going to spam them and it's it's a promise that you do. Right? So the idea is to uh, idea to have an option, idea to have a customizable child window in, in the place in here is is so that you can customize the copy in the child window basis your user type, right? So it depends upon the business that you are in. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right, perfect. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question about. Now, I'm not sure how this how this applies, but let's let's see if you can answer it here for us. So, if somebody types from their computer, if they type the word "stop," the question okay. is, does the software unsubscribe them automatically? I'm sorry. If 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 the user types the word "stop" on their keyboard when they see a notification up. So, so the, the the way I read this question is like an SMS, right? If you have an SMS service oh, and you mm -hmm. write stop, would it then stop the notification? I, I think we need to unsubscribe them. Would it yeah. unsubscribe them? So maybe we explain the difference between web push and uh, mobile notifications. Okay, so I'll explain it to you that way. So um, with SMSs, uh, typically the way you receive the SMSs is is because the, the someone who's sending you SMSs has got your phone number, right? So it is not something that you have actually opted into. For example, if you have my phone number, you have all the rights in the world to send me an SMS uh, one time in a day, uh, unless and until there is uh, a com compliance issue, right, from the government, right? Uh, however, with push notifications, your visitors have actually opted to receive these push notifications. There is no way in this world you can send someone push notifications without having them to, given their their personal consent, to send you push notifications. So there is as such no unsubscribe uh, option available by just typing in stop because use push notifications work um, in a in a in a one way go right. So do not work to and fro. And when you send them a push notification, there is no way these guys can actually send you a pen asking you to unsubscribe. The only way they can unsubscribe is by clicking on a cog icon that they see on the notifications. And if they click on that, they see a list of all the websites that they have subscribed to on the browser. And they have to manually find through the website through which they're getting this notification and click on a button called block notification. And this only then they can unsubscribe. Right? Or the other way to unsubscribe is to just delete the browser because they have given the browser the consent to send notifications. So if they delete the browser up, you actually do not have something to send the notification. It is it is almost like uh, breaking that phone up 
through which you are sending the SMS. But the only reason why push notifications are valued over SMSs is because the end users have opted in to receive these notifications. Okay, Vipul, uh, can you just quickly show in Chrome where the settings is to unsubscribe? Because uh, uh, I guess a lot of people will, will want to have an un understanding of uh, where it's actually stored that you can send push notifications. Okay. So this, this, this is something that I should be doing when we actually send a push notification out. However, uh, if on the Chrome browser, if you go to your service worker internals, um, now this is a this is a command that that you could type in in your Chrome browser. What it helps you to uh, to see is a list of all the service workers that you have subscribed to, right? So it, it shows me a list of all the websites that I have subscribed to. So for example, there's this website called 724credit.litreach.com. Um, now it could be one of the clients from Litreach. It is a website that I have subscribed to. If I want to unsubscribe to this website, all I want to do is unregister the service worker. And as soon as I click on unregister and refresh this page, I am unsubscribed to notifications from 724 credit. Right, so just type in this uh, URL in your browser, Chrome uh, colon slash slash service worker dash internals, and you can see the list of the websites that you have subscribed to. The other way to see it is, is to actually uh, click on a settings icon that you see on the notifications that you receive. And when you see this, the same window is going to open up on the browser. Perfect. Great, thank you. All right. Um, for however, for Mozilla Firefox, for every notification that you receive, Mozilla Firefox gives you the option to to actually mute the notifications uh, for a particular number of hours, or actually, or unsubscribe completely from those notifications. All right. So it is easier to unsubscribe on Mozilla Firefox. However, for Chrome, it is not really that easy. Okay. Perfect. Just uh, let's let's continue with the demo. Sure. Then the next option that we have is the GCM option. Uh, what GCM stands for is the Google Cloud Messaging module. Uh, Google Cloud Messaging is actually the root of the technology that website push notifications are based upon, and hence this step is highly critical. Uh, we usually recommend all the clients and all the users of Letreach to not to get into this option and contact the support if they want to change it. Um, what GCM helps you to do is, if you have a custom GCM enabled, it helps you to avoid that vendor lock-in and migrate all the subscribers later on if you are really willing to migrate your subscribers out. However, there, since there are a number of other complications as well uh, appended and attached to it, we recommend everyone to not to go ahead with the GCM uh, settings if they are not really comfortable with the technology and let Letreach actually handle the same. Hi. <clears throat> the next okay. thing we have is uh, is the user settings. In the user settings, what you see is uh, the list of all the users that you have in the system. When you click on that, any of the usernames, what you can do is actually change the user role or delete the user. Right, and you can you can add a user uh, from the 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 ham icon that you see in the right right bar. I really cannot click this as of now because. Uh, there is this go to webinar widget over there, but let me try clicking on this. Okay, I, I see this. You see this? I click on the ham icon that is present on the right sidebar, and what I see uh, is the account details that I have. Then I see a list of all the websites that I've added, and I can choose to click on any of the websites if I've added multiple websites. I also have a button to add a new domain name or add a new user. When I click on add a new user, I can just enter the name and email and the user role that I want them to be into, and they'll be sent an email wherein they are requested to join Letreach dashboard uh, with that particular user role for that website. Right. The next option that we have is something called welcome notifications. Now, welcome notifications um, part is something that I highly recommend almost everyone to set up. What it helps you to do is, uh, so for example, if any time someone subscribes to your website push notification, welcome notification kind of welcomes them with a sample push notification that you can customize to send uh, over to them. 
it is it is just like an autoresponder um, that you send when someone subscribes to your email updates so you send them a thank you email here you send them a thank you welcome notification um, what it also helps your subscriber to know is to be aware of the kind of updates that you will be sending and also the kind of up updates that you will be sending in as push notifications right um, and what it also helps you to do it, it helps your visitors and your subscribers to actually engage with your notifications later on so if you send them a welcome push notification today we have actually seen people getting boosts later on with the engagement rates as opposed to the people who hadn't set up welcome push notifications and you can set up your welcome push notifications um, as anything you want to be we have a sample and a custom default text put in up there which we believe works for almost everyone um, for example herein we have thank you for subscribing you can hope to receive similar updates from us now easy question mark right so um, when, when they click on this they can be redirected to any of the uh, URLs you could redirect them to a thank you page as well if you are willing to and then you can send them to uh, you can also add a custom welcome image up in here Okay, you thank you. Uh, question real quick on that, uh, scheduling notifications. First, first, I just want to put my little two cents in there is that the importance of that is getting immediate interaction with your audience. So the question that's come into the room is do you schedule the notification or does it just go out automatically? No. So it goes up automatically. So as soon as someone would, and, and if, you have, if, you have, if you have set up your welcome push notification and if you have clicked on the save button, which means that welcome push notifications are active. So as soon as someone would subscribe to your notification and as soon as someone is actually su successfully subscribed to your web push notifications, they would end up getting a notification almost instantly. All right, so the idea is Perfect. to actually capture the attention uh, instantly when, when they're actually in the action of subscribing, right? And that is why we choose right. to it's, send them. It's very instantly. Yeah. So that, there are a number of use cases for welcome push notifications. Uh, you can redirect the welcome push notification to a thank you page wherein you can also capture the email address and other details and convert it into a lead capture page. Uh, what it also, what you can also do is send them an instant because if someone subscribed to your website push notifications and if you're sending them value almost instantly, uh, what you can expect to, to happen in the next time is to have them click on your notifications almost all the times, right? So, for example, if I am an affiliate marketer and if I'm asking all of my visitors on my website to subscribe to my website push notifications, right? Um, and if they subscribe to my website push notifications and if I'm sending them a welcome push notification telling them that, hey, thank you for subscribing. And I, since you subscribe, I want to delight you by gifting you something. Uh, here's the playbook on the top 10 affiliate marketing campaigns that I have run so far and they are highly profitable so and this is up for you for free right um, so what it, it gets them to do it, it it clocks in that excitement it clocks in that surprise level for them they and they'll never forget you for this right so you you serving value which is totally surprise based so you could use welcome push notification for such use cases yeah, it it's like teaching a child. If you if you immediately reward them, okay. If you immediately reward your list, your your people subscribing, they're more likely, you know, to respond and, and be interactive with you. So this is this is a fabulous fabulous feature that gets your people rewarded instantaneously upon subscription, and it stays high on their mind. So thank you, Bibble. <clears throat> yeah, sure. You're welcome. Okay, the so next that we have are the settings on installation. Uh, on the installation settings, um, um, what you would see uh, is the installation steps that that you need to do and, and that you need to perform to get started with HH. Um We generally put all the installation steps uh, back in the settings all the time, so so that if ever you um, I mean, remove the code by chance or by mistake. You can always come back here on the installation settings and grab your line of code or send the code uh, to your developer or actually download your WordPress plugin as well. And I hope the settings part is well covered now. So let me move the next to campaigns. Campaigns page, um, 
does what is it, 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 it shows you a list of all the campaigns that you have run so far with NetReach. It shows you a list of all the notifications that you've run so far. And it shows you those notifications in a classified manner basis the type of campaign that you have run. So the first that we have is the manual campaign. In the manual campaigns, what you see are all the ma campaigns that you have run manually, as the word says. Then we have A-B test campaigns. In the A-B test campaigns, these are the campaigns that you have run with A-B testing mode already on on this. Then you have auto RSS campaigns, which are the campaigns that have been automatically triggered basis an update in the RSS feed on your website. And I'm going to pick up more on what exactly is RSS and how does it work. Then what you see uh, is the overall stats for all of the campaigns that, that has been pushed. And overall stats is for sure is an interesting thing for you to look out for. Okay. Um, now let me first take you through the manual campaigns. In the manual campaigns, you have three for the categories as pushed, drafts, and scheduled. In the pushed category, what you see is the total number of notifications that you have pushed and that have been actually pushed to your subscribers. Then you have drafts, uh, in case you have saved in drafts, and then you have scheduled, in case you have scheduled any notification. In the pushed category, what you see is a preview of the notification that was pushed, and then you see the URL that was uh, redirected to, um, and then the timestamp of the notification and the filter that you must have chosen. Now, fil what filter does is um, filter. What filter does is filter would would help you narrow down on your existing audience and create a custom um, set for for yourself, right? So, for example, I have created this filter for people living in India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, typically the sub-Asian countries, right? Uh, and I've only targeted to send a push notification out to people living in these countries. Right? Um, so I see the number of pushed, I see the number of views, I see the number of clicks. What pushed means is the number of notification that have been pushed, but views uh, represent is the total number of impressions and the eyeballs that we have been able to grab on those notifications. And then what we see is the number of clicks that we have generated over those notifications. Um, what I also have are the two options called repush and report. If I click on repush, um, I would be redirected to the new notification page where the data that I used to send this notification already feed it in with that new notification page. It's almost like uh, repushing the campaign after I am done uh, making some changes if I want to. If I click on report, what I see is a detailed click performance report for this particular campaign. And in this click perform and performance report, what I see is the overall stats for this notification, uh, the UTM parameters uh, I've used, if I've used any. And I'll, I'll also come back on what exactly are UTM parameters and how can you best use these UTM parameters for. And then what I see is the audience information. Uh, I see that this notification was sent to a filter which carried the name like this and this was sent on this day and this time. And then what I see is the click performance because this is something that's really important for you to measure because your conversions are only going to happen when someone is actually directed back to your website, right? So you really want to see on how has the performance been happening for one of your campaigns or for all of the campaigns, right? So now I know that if I talk about the platform, I received 47.8% clicks from a Windows platform and 671 clicks from an Android phone, right? Um, what I know Google, I have a question added into the window that's very applicable to this slide right here. Uh, the question is from, from Dave, I believe it was, and he's asking for mobile device users, do they have mm -hmm. to have, so that would be the Android people, do they have to have a browser window open in order to receive that notification? No, they do not need to have any browser window open to be able to receive these notifications. All of the website push notifications will be delivered on the mobile devices just like the app notifications would get delivered, right? And they really, don't, they really do not want, need to have a browser open to be able to receive these notifications. Even if the browser is not running in the background, uh, we can push them a notification and when they click on the notification, it is then the browser will trigger itself automatically. Okay, perfect. And another question I want to sneak in right here is about the repush to mm -hmm. send to does that does that send to all or does or 
those who didn't click, or is that just an opportunity to clone the the push? So the push comes up as an opportunity to actually clone the notification itself. Um, you can clone all the specifics that you added in the notification by clicking on repush. And if you talk about the subscribers, you can choose to send it to all the subscribers or to the segments. However, if you really want to clock in the use case that, wherein you want to send the notification out to people who didn't click on the previous notification, you might want to look at the automation sequences that we have in place and for that case. Perfect. And just another comment that we got in the box about the Android versus uh, we're not seeing any iPhones in there. We just want to stress that's not because that's because iPhone doesn't support uh, the concept of push notifications, right? Do you yes. want to speak to that um, for a second? IPhone, iPhones do not support. I mean, this is something that uh, that is from Apple's end. Uh, Apple iPhone iOS actually do not support website push notifications. I mean, they do not have a technology support at all as of now. So we really cannot push notifications out on iOS. With iOS, only app push notifications work. You can only send people notifications on iOS if you have your application installed in the devices. Perfect. Thank you. And another question, I'm, I'm sneaking a couple in here. If a subscriber is not on the computer at the mm -hmm. sending time, will they receive it after? Does LetReach resend it automatically, or what happens there? Okay. So typically what happens is if someone is not at its computer, I'm assuming that the computer is in the sleep mode or it's 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 been hibernating, right? Um, so what really happens is when you push the notification out, we uh, ping the browser up there that, hey, we have an update to deliver and let me know when the user comes online and I'll send you the update, right? So we send them the notification when the user would have an active screen uh, up there, right? Um, so it is sure that, that they're going to receive that eyeball. And, 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 and it doesn't matter when, when does the user come online. As long as the user is coming online within one month of you sending that notification, we uh, show that notification now. However, we must, we must, I mean, we must be, we, I mean, we must know that you're not the only one who's going to send the notification out to that user. So for example, if I am someone uh, who subscribed to website push notifications, I'm obviously subscribed to a number of other websites as well, right? So, and if I'm not being online for almost 24 hours, 48 hours, there are a number of notifications that gets collected uh, up in the browser. And perhaps that is why what I, uh, and that is why I, I mean, I might ignore all the notifications up and might ignore yours as well. And and that is why it, it happens that way that you push out 1,000 notifications. However, only 600, 700 are being viewed or maybe 900 are being viewed and still 100 are not being viewed. So the reason why 100 are not being viewed is perhaps because they come online after a long time and they have a lot of notifications to view so they just tend to ignore all of them. Um, and there could be a number of other use cases which which could be as generic as possible. But yes, we, we, we continue send, uh, trying to, we continue to try to send the push notification and we definitely push the notification when the user is active on the screen or when the screen is active. Okay. Another quick question. Uh, so Andre says, I thought you can get an iOS account that will enable you to push. Have you heard anything about this, Vipal? No, I'm sorry. I Let's have not iOS. heard about this. And, and Andre, um, we have, um, I mean, within the company, we have something called R&Drs, wherein uh, we do research almost uh, five hours every week, right? And that's the minimum number that we spend on on researching. Um, so far, iOS do not support web push notifications. I think the account that you're talking about is an Apple developer's account, which helps you to set up notifications on Safari for Mac OS and not the iOS, right? So my Safari browser is going to support website push notifications, but the Safari browser on my iPhone will not support website push notifications, even in that case. Great. Thank you for answering all those questions. We snuck quite a few in there. We can continue on now with the device segmentation. <laughs> Thanks, Vipul. Sure. So um, I was at the part wherein I was showing you the click performance data for an individual um, notification. And, and for you as a marketer, it is very important to understand the click performance report. 
um, that you get for every campaign uh, because what it helps you to do it helps you to optimize your campaigns um, later on as in as in like the entire within the entire ecosystem already clocking in and you and you'll understand this better when I'll take you through the other other pages as well <coughs> sorry for, for this particular campaign uh, uh, what you see in the click performance is the platform segmentation so you know uh, these many people clicked from Android and then uh, 671 people clicked from mobile and 693 clicked from a desktop and most of these were clicking on from a Chrome browser if you talk about geo segmentation what you get to see is uh, how many people have actually clicked from which country and if you click on any country you get to see how many people have clicked from which of the cities in those countries right so so it is that molecular for you what you can also do is you can clone this notification if you see that the performance was really good or you could download the entire report as a PDF or as a CSV if you want to report it further to your client or maybe to your superiors if you're working in a company. And this is the kind of notification report that you can see for every campaign uh, you run out there, regardless of the fact of if it was a manual campaign or if it was an A-B test campaign or if it, even if it was an auto RSS push campaign, you get to see all of the data up in there. And what it helps you to do is it helps you to actually optimize your next campaigns basis the clicks that you receive, right? And and what usually we recommend all of the um, users of Retreat is to 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 kind of analyze what is the time that their users are the most active at, and then send them notifications in that time because notifications are very real time, right? I mean, you send you click a button over here and you you are expected to push that notification and get the donation be shown in the user's browser if they're active in another five minutes tops, right? So you, you really want to send the notification or schedule the notifications um, when you believe your users are going to be active. So for the same, um, we really wanted all of our users to not to be assuming that this is the time the users are the most active as and hence what we do is we put in some machine learning um, we scan through all the data that you build over all the subscribers and all the campaigns that you have and give you something called overall stats for all the campaigns. Now you, you want to really uh, focus on this thing because this is something really important for you to take a look at as a marketer and also as someone who might really want to outsource the services of Retreach to someone else. Right? In the overall stats what you see is um, first taking you through the total number of notifications that you have pushed so far, the total number of views that you have generated and the total number of clicks that you have generated. So you see 20 million plus notifications have been pushed from this particular demo account, 9 million plus views have been generated and 542,000 plus clicks have been generated, right? So that's the part that you can actually look up to if you have traffic on the website and if you're able to clock in subscribers because I believe website push notifications as of now is the only marketing medium that gets you the maximum exposure out there with all of your users. None of the other marketing medium gets you those, those clicks through dates. Uh, then the most important thing that you have in the overall stats in the campaign tab is the click performance data and the click performance data sliced at basis the time zones, right? So what you see is across the 24 hour span that you have in the day what is the time when you get the maximum clicks at? Right? So you get to see that uh, for this particular uh, uh, data in this account, the maximum clicks that you get is um, is from 12 to 1 p.m. in UTC. Right? So what you what you know is that perhaps your users are the most active, or they are clicking the most around this particular time. And an intelligent way of doing this is so once you have collected about 500 or 1,000 subscribers. Uh, what we usually recommend is to um, is to send notifications out at every one hour of interval, right? For for example, uh, you could test your notifications for ten days, and what you should do is if you know that your user, so for example, if you are in IST, which is an India-based time zone, uh, and uh, and you know that your and your audience type um, is going to be working from eight a.m. to perhaps ten p.m. So what you should do is you should send two notifications out almost every day. You send the first notification out today at 8 a.m. and then at 10 p.m. Right. Uh, the next day you send one notification out at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. The other day you send at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. The other day 10, 11 a.m. 11 p.m. Right. 
so you send the notifications out for different different times so or different different time intervals for the first 10 days and what it helps you to do it helps you you to build that graph for for your data to see what is the time that your users are the most active at and once you know that the users are the most active at this time and if you have an important announcement to make uh, on which you want to get the maximum clicks you can actually schedule a notification locally for that time right so so this also helps you to know that what is the time your you your users are the most active at which is a very important metric to track so for this account for example as as i said again uh, 12 to 1 in utc is the time that you should be sending the most notifications at then what you also see is the click performance data as per segmented basis the platform the device and the browser and the geography again now this is again an important metric yeah, well, we're talking about clicks sorry while we're talking about clicks i want to sneak this one in and that is just clarification of the view versus the click so the viewed when we see the the stat for viewed that means that the notification has popped up on someone's browser right yes the notification has popped up on someone's browser okay so it is the, the clicks is when they're actually clicking yes it is the impression that is generated it is the eyeball that has generated right so with push notifications um these notifications are never going to go off until the user gets into an interaction mode so the user either clicks on the cross button or actually clicks on the notification so which means that the user is actually dedicating an eyeball to that notification so that is why we call it the views and then if they click on the notification as in click and click on it to click uh, to be redirected to the url that you want it to be it is then they count it as clicks Okay, perfect. That's very clear. Thank you. We just wanted to clarify that. Now, we do have a question that's a little bit more advanced, but I want to sneak it in and it is about uh putting a tracker in. The question is, can you get your conversion rate or add tokens to allow tracker post back? So, I believe they're asking if you can put a tracker or pixel in. Tracker or pixel in what? In the click into your I believe they're asking uh into your push notification. Okay. Uh so if you have an affiliate URL which is something like let's say literacy.com slash question mark affiliate ID is equals to Vipul Garg uh you can put in any URL to be redirected to any of the notifications right so if you are a, if you are a marketer let's say on Warrior forum and if you're promoting any product uh you obviously get your affiliate URL right um so what you can do is when you create a new campaign and you send a notification out in the redirect url you could actually add that particular url and that url is going to stay the same so when someone clicks on the notification he is redirected to that product page with your affiliate id already appended in so you can you can you know that actually someone opened your um affiliate id uh, based url so if if they purchase your uh, conversion happens there however if if your question is about tracking the conversion to see that okay fine i send this notification out to 1000 people 500 people clicked on my notification but how many people actually bought the product up so the way you can do it is by utm parameters right I, and use utm parameters to map it with google analytics and this is kind of something that's that's advanced and but i'm going to talk brief, briefly about this when i move to the new notifications module uh but really really very good question and for sure a very good use case to map i mean something this is something that that um that only the enterprise clients that we have um ask about and and we always get really happy to answer about this certainly a very good use awesome. case good question yeah <clears throat> okay so now now I, i was at the part wherein i was telling you that the, it is really important for on the overall stats to see that uh which platform device and browser gets you the most clicks now uh, now in the overall stats what you see is that you get the maximum clicks from an android which is a mobile phone and this is well justified in the device segmentation as well and what you also see is that you get the maximum clicks on chrome browser right if you scroll down what you see is that you have gotten the maximum clicks so far from united states and then from india right and if you can if you click on united states you also get to see the cities that you have gotten this clicks from now this is something that you must remember and i would i would request you to take a note of it in fact 
for example, for this data, you must remember as a marketer that I get the maximum clicks from United States and from a mobile phone, right? Uh, and we'll we'll do some mathematics now uh, when we move to the next tab. Uh, and and obviously, you can download all of these reports as a PDF or CSV anytime for reporting purposes. I hope the campaigns part is now clear. Uh, we're going to the next to the subscribers tab, and it is then the data is going to talk more sense when you'll be able to relate your subscriber segmented segments with the performance that you get, right? You obviously want to get subscribers from the uh, from the geographies, from the devices wherein they're actually clicking as as well, right? So that helps you to do to map it that way. And and I'll be talking about this. Let let me click on the subscribers tab. Okay, in the subscribers tab, what you see is the subscriber reports overall. I see a plain graph because uh, there have been no subscribers for the last 30 days. Uh, there's been no data input on this, and it's a demo account. So, um, but a good thing here is that we have uh, a selection uh, date picker. Go to select uh, the data and view the data for yesterday, last seven days, last three days, this month, last month overall or a custom range so I can choose in the custom range but I'm gonna select and view the data for overall case right so it's gonna show the data for all the data points that we've imported in here so it might take a little little bit of time to load because it's almost 748,000 uh, data for almost 748,000 people right so but it's still it's, it's quite fast Okay, so now I see is a day-to-day -day subscriber acquisition graph. I see that how many subscribers have I acquired on a daily basis. Then what I see is the subscription segmentation basis, the platform, the device, the browser, and the geography. I know that out of all the subscribers I've gotten, 269,000 plus I have got from Windows, which is the highest so far, and 228,000 plus have uh, been subscribing from Android. Now, a good point to notice over here is that I see that most of my subscribers are from Windows, right? However, in my overall stats, I know that most of the clicks that I receive are from mobiles. So, perhaps if I get more subscribers from mobiles, I'm going to get more of the clicks, right? <coughs> Sorry. So, if you're a marketer, and if you want to push your visitors uh, and actually entice them to subscribe to you, you can actually ask them to subscribe to your web push notifications on a mobile phone. Because your data tells you that you get more subscribers on a, on a desktop anyway. However, you get the maximum clicks of, from a mobile phone. Right? So you should be more focused on to getting subscribers from a mobile device. So this is how you actually could... Um, could, could actually relate the data from the individual performance to the overall performance to the subscriber graph. And then you see the Chrome browser gets you the maximum browsers, um, maximum subscriptions. Then what you also see is the country that you get the maximum subscriptions from. Now this is something that's, that's already fixed, right, for, for, for this particular use case on this data. Uh, I get the maximum clicks from United States and I get the maximum subscribers from United States. So this is something I do not need to fix. I'm already good here. Right. However, what I see in there is that I have gotten uh, 748,000 plus subscribers so far, out of whom only 516 plus are active, and 232,000 plus uh, have got dormant now. What we mean by dormant is that these are the people who have actually churned away. These are the people who have unsubscribed to your notifications. Right. So I obviously want to see um, who are these people. So what I can do is I can just switch my tab from subscribes to unsubscribes by just clicking on this button and then a new page will load up with all the graphs and statistics for all the people who have unsubscribed. But previously I was I was show, looking at the data around the people who have subscribed to my notifications. Now I can look at the data um, and look at look at the graph on the people who have I've churned away. Now <coughs> And coming to the part on why is it important and what use case does it hold for you as a marketer or for you or as any brand marketer or a brand builder or, or as any agent, um, you get to see the number of people who have been unsubscribing to your notification on a daily basis. Now we know that people usually unsubscribe to notifications when they actually receive the notification, right? Because that's the only way they, to unsubscribe. 
So if we get a tick or if we get a real, a real peak in our unsubscriptions, for example, uh, the way it happened from this data on 25th of July 2016 to 12,000 people have actually unsubscribed from notifications. So there must have been something that really went wrong on 12th, 25th of July, right? Because I, I know people unsubscribe only when they receive the notification. Um, so what I can do is I can go back to my campaigns. I can look at the campaigns that I ran on 25th of July and learn from the campaigns that I have run, right? So it might be the case that I have run irrelevant campaigns, right? It might be the case that I have promoted irrelevant products, which my which my which my list didn't really like, so they unsubscribed. It might be the case that I pushed a notification out at an irrelevant time, right? Um, I sent irrelevant information at an irrelevant time. So, for example, one of the use cases would be um, if I if I am a website and if I send to my list a push notification at the night time, uh, saying that hey, do you know what these are the top ten sounds to start your day with? Obviously, they're not going to like it, right? Because it's night for them and they do not want to start the day, they do not want to end the day, they do not want to find inspiration, um, they, what they want to do is they find they want to find peace and obviously they might get annoyed and they might unsubscribe your notifications. Another way could be um, you are someone who is interested in health and fitness but I send this person um, an, a notification asking him to buy a tech product. I mean this guy doesn't understand technology, right? So the notification comes up as as complete blast blast for him, right? He doesn't understand it, so he might unsubscribe. So what it helps you to do is it helps you to analyze the unsubscription rate on a daily basis, and it helps you to go back and see what are the campaigns that you ran on 25th July or 24th of July, right? <coughs> and what is it? And it helps you to analyze it. What is it that actually made your subscribers to to churn away? And the way you can do it in better sense is to go go down and look at the platform that they churned away from. Right? So I know that number of people, actually 40% of people churned away from an Android phone, right? And it's, it's a mobile phone. So I know that people subscribe to my notification on the second place from mobiles. They click the most on a mobile. And a good percentage of them are churning away. So there's something that I'm not doing really right for that particular data, right? So I can go back to my campaigns, see on which date uh, I sent a campaign out, see on which date my, my subs subscribers were losing the most from mobile, and I know that I do not want to run similar campaigns from now on for all of my mobile subscribers anymore. Right? What it also helps you to, to, to take a look at is, is the country that these guys are mostly unsubscribing from. Right. So if you are running some paid ads as well, or if you have some paid media of, uh, of, of advertising as well and if you we know that people are actually not liking your notifications so we assume that if people are not liking a notification they're not liking your updates if they're not liking your updates they're not liking your offers they're not, not they're not liking your services right so which also kind of implies that they're not going to like your ads as well or maybe your other media as well so if you know I mean if you so let's say if if I know that almost 9,000 plus people from Philippines are unsubscribing out of uh, out of X number who have subscribed from Philippines, so I can go back to subscriptions tab and see how many people subscribe from Philippines over the entire period. And let's say if I get the number as 10,000, and I know that almost 9,000 plus have already unsubscribed, which is more than 93% as of as of from this number, I can actually choose to get rid of Philippines as one of the target countries in my paid media, because I know that it doesn't really convert for website push, and I know it's people in there are not liking my uh, my offers and if I really want to target Philippines as a country for, for my paid media or for my paid ads perhaps I want to push on some other offer right the idea is to to talk with the data in here and convert them into actionable insights all of that is is upfront available in the dashboard and you all need to do is just uh, play through analyze what's what's been happening and take some attractions and there have been a number of marketers who, who have been able to to take up actions at, from the actionable insights that they get from Latrich dashboard and grow their revenue up to 1.5x, which is something that they always cherish for the lifetime. Fifth, powerful information. We do have a couple of questions. If you can go to the geo targeting or the geo segmentation, 
the questions so. are geared, geared around how you can see the cities. Uh, let's see, we've got how can you display yeah. city locations? Another question. There was another question about cities. I can see cities and can you also see the OS on device segmentation? So can you talk a little bit about the cities? Okay, so you already see the OS on the platform segmentation. You see it's JNU Linux, it's Android, it's Mac OS, it's Windows, it's others, it's uh, Chrome OS, right? So that part is already answered there. The way you want to look at the city is when you look at the country up in here, all you need to do is just click on the country and the graph will load up for the city, right? So in Philippines, you have got 236 unsubscribes from Manila City, from 205 from Basic, 147 from Binodo, 141 from Makur, um, 493 from Benigao, and all of these cities, right? So, and you can also download the so, report. <coughs> So you can also download the report as CSV, wherein you get to see everything in an Excel format. So that part is already sorted. Coming to geofencing your target and geotargeting your subs uh, your notifications, uh, this is something that the next module called segments covers really well. So if 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 you're done with the question up to this module, I can go to the next module called segments. I do have another question regarding like on Android, the OS. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to see what OS that's coming from, like 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, does it get that specific? Yes. As of now, as of now, we do not show that data up in the literature dashboard. However, um, there, 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 there is a slight OS part that we're able to capture, but we really do not show it up on the literature dashboard as of now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, shall I move, shall I move ahead? Uh, one more question. Sorry, it just came in. Do we get access to these underlying data points for analysis? Which underlying data points? This aggregated data points for the direction that is not indexed. So the question is that the aggregated data points us in a direction but is not indexed for the average averages by country, OS, etc. So everything that you see on the demo up in here is also available in your account. Um, once you start using Letree, the data is built for your account and for, for your subscribers. And everything that I am kind of demoing at the moment, it is all um, viewable, downloadable, in fact, in your dashboard as well. So right. there is no, no aggregate data point that we do not show in your dashboard and we show in ours. Everything is, what we see is what you see. Right. Thank you. Okay. So sh shall I proceed ahead? Yep, we're good to go. Cool. So the next module that we have is something called segments. Um, <coughs> sorry. So in the segments, what we have are two tabs called segments and filters. Now these two tabs are really, really important tabs because it ha actually helps you to take your marketing to the next level. And this kind of gets into a little bit advanced point of view as well. So what segments help you do is it segments help you to tag your subscribers bases a particular page. So for example, um, if I am running, um, I mean, if, if let's say if I am running a website and I want to really uh, narrow down my subscribers and tag them bases the page that they subscribe from, what I can do is I can go to Literary's dashboard, I can create a new segment and I can give this segment a name. So for example, let's say I, I have a product called uh, let's say ABC, right? Uh, and what I really want to do is everyone who is subscribing to my website or to web push notifications from my website from any of the page belonging to the ABC category, what I can do is I can create a segment name called ABC and I, when I click on the next, okay, ABC cannot be named, but sure. So what, what I can do is I, I get a line of code. So what I all, all, all need to do is add this line of code to all of the pages which belong to the ABC category. So now any time when someone would subscribe to push notifications from any of the pages which belong to the ABC category or to any of the pages which carries this code, they will be automatically added to a segment called ABC 
and will also be tagged as ABC push, right? And what it helps you to do is tomorrow, if you want to send a push notification out only to the people who subscribed from this ABC segment, you can you can do this. Another use case that you have in there is <coughs> another use case that you have in there is, so for example, um, and it's, and it's actually a very good use case for almost all the marketers out there. Now, let's say uh, you know you want to build a subscribers base uh, on mobile phones, right? So you. Uh, for all of the mobile traffic that you have, what you do is you 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 what you do is you you show a pop up or you create another page uh, wherein you say, hey, if you subscribe to my push notifications, I'm gonna give you this ebook, or I'm gonna give you this course, or I'm gonna give you X Y Z, right? So something like this. And what you want to do is you want to add them to a segment so that later on um, you know if you have a similar thing to promote, you can definitely promote the same. So, for example, talking on the lines of uh, an internet marketer because that's the audience that we have um, and, and, and the most of the audience that we have. Let's say if, um, if you have an ebook to promote, so and what you do is you create a squeeze page um, and you create a squeeze page, let's say ebook one squeeze page. And on that on that on that uh, page, what you you to ask people to do is drop in their email address and subscribe to your website push notification. And if they do it, they are going to receive uh, the first five uh, pages on that ebook for for them to review for free, right? Um, so what you can do is you can create a segment name, and you can set up an autoresponder for the segment, right? So what autoresponder will do is it will customize the welcome push notification for that particular segment, right? So typically, if someone would subscribe to a welcome to your notifications, and if you have a welcome push notification set up, they will be receiving that that default welcome push notification, right? However, if you want to customize this basis the segment, you can do it from here. So you can add a title, you can add a message, and you can add an action URL. Now, um, let's say if I promise them to send them an ebook for free, I can, I can, I can say that hey, uh, claim your free ebook by clicking on this notification, and I can point it to let's say netreach.com slash free ebook, and I click on next. Right, and I get this line of code. Now, all I need to do is add this line of code to that particular page. Now, anytime when a visitor would come up for, on that page, it will be shown that prompt um, of that of that net reach native of, of that opt-in, which is anyway that he's going to see. As soon as he clicks on the allow button, um, he gets subscribed to notifications. Now, in the back end, net reach would tag this guy as ebooks one free page, and Will send him a welcome push notification saying, "Hey, thanks for subscribing. Here is the link for your for your free ebook." And he sees this as a welcome push notification, right? So, and so all of the purposes are solved. You are able to tag your um, audience as uh, in a part as a particular segment name. Uh, your um, visitor gets converted into a subscriber, so you can um, I mean send him more push notifications later on and perhaps more offers as well. And what, and he gets his free ebook that too as a push notification, right? So, so he knows that if ever he gets a notification out from you again, he he, he got to click on this because he's gotten value the first time he clicked, right? He, he got something for free, or maybe he got value from by clicking on your notification, right? And what you can also do is since you know that this particular visitor subscribed to push notifications for this kind of an offer. And you have already tagged them with a segment name. So if you have a similar offer later on to promote, you could just directly push this out to this particular segment and actually have conversions cropping in. So that's the basic use case of the segments out there. Real quick, Vipal, on that, uh, we're getting a question not quite clear where to put the code. Does that go in the head, the section, the body? Uh, you should ideally put it up in the head. And that's what the uh, yeah. So that's what the code also says, right? So you should you should put this up on the page. It should ideally be fired before the literal script, uh, and that is why we usually ask the guys to put it up on the code because that's 
that's that's in the code loads of the first and it's it's a code that doesn't really uh, call any script or anything it is just something that tells the literal script to add a tag to that particular subscriber that's it so it, it would not really um, affect your loading speed or anything it is just a code that your browser will read that's it so Webwell, there was a specific question about uh, the linking it with WordPress categories, but um, so your your answer actually answers that question as well. So it, as long as you uh, put this on a page, whether it's a category page or a product page or any type of page that you've set up in your uh, on, on your website, it uh, it can be uh, included in that page, right? Yeah. Uh, in fact. Um, the better ways to do it for WordPress websites. Um, one, you can use the Literage plugin. If you're using the Literage plugin, uh, all the categories that you have made in your WordPress will be automatically detected, right? Um, and in the website push notification. That's one. Two. Um, if you want to, if 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 you in that case you want to tag uh, visitors on a particular page, if they subscribe to web push notifications, you can just create a segment in here. And in the WordPress, you have in the WordPress editor, what you have is the HTML view and the text view, right? So in the HTML view uh, on that particular page or that article itself, you can just copy paste this line of code and it will work. Okay. Right. <coughs> And, and for the okay. people who are not really willing to use the WordPress plugin but yet want to tag all of their subscribers automatically basis the categories, um, we have a line of code that we that we can request them to add in a particular file on the WordPress installation, um, and, and and they can get in touch with me or on the support, and I can help them do that. It's just a line of code that you need to add and. In a file called single.php uh, in WordPress, and all the categories will be automatically tracked then if they're not using a WordPress plugin, even in that case. Okay, so another question is so if uh, a subscriber has already subscribed to push notifications on another page, can they still subscribe to a, a segment notification? I'm Do they have to sign up for that? So if if I if I have a uh, a visitor to my website, and mm -hmm. he has subscribed to one category, or he mm -hmm. has subscribed to general push notifications, mm -hmm. uh, how does that work when you set up a new segment? No, it doesn't really work, uh, because uh, anytime when someone has subscribed to website push notifications from one, um, from 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 any of the websites. We do not show them the opt-in again ever. There's there's never a chance that you see the opt-in and you have already subscribed to the website push notification unless you have cleared the cookies and the local storage and everything and the cache and everything. So in that case, uh, it it doesn't really happen. They cannot subscribe. However, uh, for that option, we're working on a feature wherein you'll be able to create a tag based on someone's search behavior, and you can do this via Literate API. So with that API, what you can do is even when someone is subscribed, and if if you want to tag them, uh, basis their search behaviors. For example, in this case, if I am subscribed to a website already, and even in that case, I land up on a website uh, uh, on on a particular page on that website which belongs to a particular segment, and if the marketer really wants to tag that particular subscriber visiting a particular page because I visited that page with a particular segment name. Um, he can do this via API integration. As of now, it's it's possible via API integration for sure, wherein users are able to create or edit tags. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. If that's clear, I can move ahead to filters. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so what filters does is filters again. Uh, come up as a very good option. What it helps you to do is it helps you to create your custom audience and save it for targeting purposes. Now let's say um, I have a website with multiple categories as health, entertainment, technology, hilarious, uh, sports and all the other stuff and what I really want to do is I only want to uh, target the people 
living in let's say United States of America, living in San Francisco, and have subscribed to my notifications from a health segment, right? So what is the best way to do it? The, the, the way to do it is by going to filters. So I go to filters and I click on this button called new filter. So when, the, when I click on this new filter button, what I see is a window <coughs> which helps me to create a particular audience. All right, so I, I can create this filter by uh, tapping on and playing across these rules that I have added, right? So I can say that the subscriber should be in at least one or every one of the following. Now, now this, this works basis the combinational logics, basis the AND and OR based logics on all of these conditions, right? So at least one would mean OR logic and every one would mean AND logic, right? So let's say I want to <coughs> I want to create a condition wherein I want to target everyone uh, who stays in the United States of America or has subscribed from the health page. Right, so what I can do is I can create, I can select an, uh, at least one. I can choose to include the countries or exclude the countries. I will in include the country uh, saying USA, uh, United States. Right, so I say United States and I delete the all part of it. I want to include all the cities or I could I could exclude a few cities, right? So uh, just, just shoot out any city that I want to exclude. <coughs> so let's say I want to exclude Saltville, right? And I want to send it to everyone staying in the United States but not the people living in Saltville. Uh, and I want to send it, and I also want to send it to all the people who have subscribed from a health page. Right, so I, I choose health and fitness. For a platform, I want to send it to everyone, and on the browser end, I want to send it to everyone, or I could just say I want to send it to people having a Chrome browser, right? And I could I could select the rule as at least one or everyone, right? So when I click on everyone, what it helps me to do is it helps me to select the people, basis and and logic, with at least one I see and or logic, right? So if I, if I choose at least one, as of now, this is my condition. What it helps, what it what it says is, I want to create a custom audience with people living in United States but not Saltville, or people uh, get belonging to health and fitness category, or people belonging to all the platforms, or people belonging to Chrome browser. However, if I really want to narrow down to personalize my notifications, I can choose to may have an everyone logic. So if I say everyone, what I want, what I really say is that I want to only target people living in United States of America but not Saltville and have subscribed to my notifications from a health and fitness page and are using a Chrome browser. Right? So it goes that deep. And I see a real time preview of the total subscribers. Uh, I have 400 pe 401 people satisfying to those conditions. So I could choose to uh, save that with a filter name. Let's say I say uh, test filter, test filter one, and I can just click on save. Right, so now the filter has been added. So now later on, if I want to send a push notification out, and <coughs> later on, if I want to send a push notification out, and if I really want to target that deep, I can come to segments, create a filter, and on in the new notifications module. Uh, I can go and select that particular filter or that particular segment and target those people up. Right? Yeah, that's great. All right. So, should I move ahead to the automation part? Yeah, let's let's move ahead. All right. So the automation. <clears throat> sorry. So in the automation, um, what we have are the function that helps you to run LetReach automatically um, and gets you conversion on autopilot. The first option that we have is something called RSS Auto Push. So what RSS Auto Push helps you to do is it helps you to send updates to all of your subscribers. Uh, on automation, right? So, 
so what it helps you to do is so for example if you have a website uh, where it, you know, let's say if you're posting content or if you're posting offers if you're posting deals if you're posting uh, products right and, and you, do, you do not really want to uh, manually come back to literature all the times and push an update to all the subscribers so what you can do is you can just click this uh, activate the RSS auto push <clears throat> and add the RSS feed URL over here so what would happen is if you have this uh, added in here and if you, if you activate this every time when your website gets updated with anything Literage and, and if, it, if it gets reflected in your RSS feed Literage will automatically pick that R up, update up draft a notification will automatically pick the featured image up from the post put it up on your notification and push it out to all of your subscribers right so an update actually happens automatically with all of your subscribers automatically so what it helps you to do is it helps you to actually make your or make all of your subscribers aware of an update that you did on the website and the update could be and and this is something that's very useful for mostly the content websites or for mostly the offers website wherein they post about the new products almost every day or they post about they post about they post new content uh, every day and all those updates are being sent to all of the subscribers in real time right uh, so that really helps helps you to drive conversion and drive traffic to your website on complete autopilot there and you get to see all of the campaigns that have been pushed in the campaigns under the RSO auto push tab Vipul, I'm going to interject a question right here, and that is, um, is is there anything in this? Oh, where did the question go? <coughs> All right, just the question. Here it is. Okay, is there any personally identifiable information in the system, or is it just demographic and activity based? No, it is all demographic and activity based. Um, uh, we do not really uh, have any personally identified information, which which works as in like at the personal level, because anytime when someone subscribes to notifications, what we get from the browser is an opaque ID, um, which works as the identifier for us. There's nothing that we have in the personal identification, right? However, you as a marketer could definitely, uh, I mean, take this information up. Uh, for your own purposes from the welcome notifications by directing them to squeeze pages maybe or lead pages. Okay, and then uh, another question, can new campaigns be made for subdomains? <coughs> so I didn't really get the question. Um, what do you mean by new campaigns for subdomains? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can set up LetReach on any domain including subdomains. Yes. So, so, yeah. so you can you can you can click on this uh, button over here, add new domain, and you can add a subdomain over here. So, for example, if I have a website called literature.com, I want to run one code on literature.com, and if you want to run another code on app.literature.com or maybe abc.literature.com, you can do this. Just go, just go over here, click on add new domain name. Uh, you'll get another line of code. Just add the line of code to the new subdomain, and it works as a complete defense of property. Right? So you run your entire new campaigns. I think there was this question in the group as well, where was this? There was a gentleman who was asking that uh, that he wanted to use Letree for uh, for local services, like for example, clubbing, for example, uh, car wash, and he's not expected to have these guys have any website. So perhaps what he can do is, if he has got any website, he can just make subdomains or subpages like a car wash dot uh, his website dot com, clubbing dot his website dot com, and push traffic to those subdomains, create different properties uh, in the literature dashboard from from this option called add new domain, and keep all of those lists separated and run campaigns, particularly for different lists um, belonging to different categories or maybe different services. And so that's that's doable. Okay, great. Vipul, just some um, housekeeping, please, I guess. Just sometimes um, there's some shuffling that I think is happening. I'm not sure if your hand's near a, a speaker or something, but people are hearing that, and some some comment has just said, uh, just be careful about the shuffling. There's some sound of shuffling going on. 
I'm not sure quite where that's coming from. I know it's not sounds happening like here. It sounds like paper or something rubbing up against the microphone on the oh, computer or something. Yeah, I okay, that's okay. Just, just be aware. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we just want to isolate the problem. <laughs> no problem. Hey, I and know. another question. I was just, um, no, sorry. Yeah. Okay, good. I think we've we fixed that now. Uh, another question: Is there a way to isolate an RSS feed on a WordPress website to only offers or a single category? Yes, uh, so I believe, um, uh, I really do not know as of now the way it happens, but you can definitely ping me up on Facebook uh, because I can check with the product team how it happens, but I have seen a few of our clients who have big content websites, so what they, what they do not want to do is they do not want to push out every update out to to all of the, all of the visitors because uh, then the visitors get really spammed of their updates. So what they have done is they mm -hmm. have uh, added the RSS feed for only one of the categories, right? And it is it is again an offers page only, right? So they have this RSS feed up uh, link as um, let's say abc.com is a website, so abc.com slash offers slash feed. Um, I and and it is a it is a WordPress website for sure. I know about it. Uh, I just need to check on how is it doable. But I think it is possible from WordPress. Uh, so uh, so the the feed URL that you enter in here uh, is is the update that goes out, right? So you can enter any feed URL. It could be a category-based feed URL. It could be uh, the overall website feed URL, right? But I think I'm, I'm sure that it, that in WordPress at least you can make a particular uh, category-based feed URL. I mean, you can Google about it. If you don't get it, you can ping me, and I can uh, get my product team to to find the solution for you. Thank you. I think that will suffice for now. Yes. In fact, um, as a matter of chance, what we are doing to help you save on this is we are kind of beginning to roll out multiple RSS feed URLs, right? So today uh, you can only, so these are two variants of Literage, by the way. One is a live account, one is a demo account. Um, so if you see this in the automation, in one of the RSS feed updates, you have only RSS auto push and you can only enter one RSS feed. However, in the other option that you have, you can actually add multiple RSS feeds, right? So you can add as many as possible, right? So uh, this is something that's uh, still in test, uh, but we expect to make this live in another one week. I see this live in my account. So you can enter your RSS feed URL, and you can choose to send it to all the subscribers or to a particular segment or to a particular filter. And not just this, you can actually choose to add an expiry parameter to, to your notifications, right? So you can choose to say that, hey, please get my notifications to expire after these many days, these many hours, and these many minutes if they're not clicked upon. Right? So the idea is um, if you're sending updates on, on autopilot, uh, you, do, you really do not want one of your users to be getting five updates if they, I mean, if they switch their computer on or if they switch their laptop on, uh, let's say, after 24 hours, because you might have published five updates since then. So what you can do is you can add an expiry parameter to it and say that, hey, if my notification is not viewed upon in the eight hours of me sending that update automatically, please do not send the update at all. Right? So so that's that powerful um, automation um, feature that we are working upon. Right? So, And you can also choose to segment through your audience, basically the page they subscribed from, or basically the search behavior, and send them relevant updates. Right? So. Uh, if I have a web, uh, website with multiple categories and I want to send them uh, updates automatically on autopilot, uh, basis the categories that they have chosen to get updates from, I can do this uh, now from multiple RSS push. So this is a okay, feature this that is they answering make. Patrick's question regarding he's asking is it possible to subscribe people to certain feeds or lists? For example, health tips for women and health tips for men, and I believe you just answered his question. Yeah. So this is something that we're working on. Um, I mean, the idea behind the automation module is uh, that we want to make literally something that, that helps you drive conversions on autopilot as well. And we want to move really fast in this segment, uh, particularly in automation. So that's something that we're working on. And we, we want to go as advanced as possible on this. We need to make sure that you get those updates. Okay. Another question, is there a hyperlink feature in message segments? 
I'm sorry, I didn't get this. What do you mean by happening sick? Message like redirect. Oh, maybe he's talking. Maybe William's talking about a redirect link. Um, oh yeah. So they know 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 we will be okay. So we're talking about a redirect. William's asking about a redirect in segments. Yes, William. So uh, it doesn't really depend upon if you are sending a notification out to a segment or to all the subscribers or to a filter. You always have the option to add a redirect URL on the on the notification. Uh, any of the notifications can be directed to any URL out there. Any any URL. <clears throat> so coming uh, to the next part of notification sequence, uh, so now notification sequence comes up as a very strong part and as a very strong feature for you to use as a marketer as well. What it helps you to do, it helps you to create drip marketing funnels and campaigns uh, to convert the subscribers across the funnel, right? So, um, so let's say if you, let's say if you have a market, if you are a marketer, right, uh, and you have a new offer that you got your hands on and you really want all of your list to know about it. Right? So what you can do is you can uh, you can create a sequence actually, a very short sequence although I mean we usually recommend um, marketers to have a couple of sequences running in full time for different segments. Uh, okay, I'm going to take give you a look of the uh, sequences the first. Okay. So you click, you go to uh, new sequences over here, you give your sequence a name, let's say I say test sequence, I can choose to send it to all the subscribers or to a particular segment or to a filter, right? Um, so the, the best practice would so far uh, would be that if you're a marketer, I would recommend you to have a sequence set up um, which kind of runs for all the subscribers and for both, both the options, right? So when, when I click on both, it means that it is going to run for the existing subscribers as well, but and for the new ones as well, right? So if, if you're someone who's setting up segments in place, I would recommend you to send, set, uh, set sequences be running uh, for segments, right? And not all subscribers. However, if you do not have segments in place, you could set it up for all subscribers as well. As of now, I'm gonna set this up for all subscribers and existing subscribers, right? Um, now let's say if I have an offer to promote, and and I really want to uh, push that offer up. Uh, I really want to promote it now, and I, I want to promote it for let's say three days, right? So what I can do is instead of really, <coughs> I'm sorry, instead of really pushing notifications out uh, dedicatedly for three days, I can create a sequence for this, right? So what I can do is I can send someone first push notification. I can edit it from here, right? I can also add call to action and everything and say, hey, if uh, I want to wait for three hours to see if the notification has been clicked upon or not. If the notification has not been clicked upon, I want to send this notification after four hours. However, if the notification has been clicked upon, I want to send this notification after maybe three hours, right? And I can go as deep as I want to, uh, basically those rules. The idea is to get a user down across a funnel and, and modify your notifications in a way such that the notification that you're going to receive now is a function of you clicking or not clicking on the last notification that you received. And funnels have actually been able to get people 20% more saves than the sales that they would get on normal campaigns because what really happens is if you're running a subscriber through a funnel, uh, it is actually sending them notifications throughout the day, let's say in intervals of two hours from now, but the notifications are kind of personalized based on the rule if they've clicked on the notification or not, right? So it really helps you to drive conversions on autopilot. So the best practice here would be to segment through all of your subscribers, run multiple sequences, run multiple sequences for multiple segments actually, 
and for both I mean, and and for for the new ones and then have one sequence running um, for the individual offers that you have right so um, for a, if any time when you have an offer in place you could set up a sequence uh, that you want to run for the next three days and then you could have an evergreen sequence running for for an evergreen offer that you have typically if I would be in, play, in your place let's say wherein I am someone who who promotes a webinar and drive sales over a webinar what I will do is I I would segment through all of the subscribers that we had that I have this is the content they're subscribing from so let's say if I am someone who sells um, web hosting uh, and I'm an affiliate marketer right so uh, I, I would put up and let's say I, I, I market through content I have content put up on a website wherein I have content from top hosting providers in the world to best deals on hosting providers to uh, how should you start your WordPress blog to um, how can you optimize your WordPress blog to the levels so let's say I've got these four articles that I'm segmenting my four uh, segmenting all of the subscribers that I have basis the four articles that they subscribe from so let's say if they're subscribing from the article called top offers and hosting I know that the user has got a perception of finding the hosting offers so I want to run a sequence which kind of uh, sells uh, one of the hosting out there with my affiliate ID clogged in but it's going to be kind of inclined uh, it is going to be little inclined towards the offers pair right and if, if someone is subscribing from uh, the top blog optimization techniques and if I have a technique saying hey use a good host provider and then I have a link to all the hosts out there I know that I want to drive him through a funnel which is kind of dedicated towards blog optimization because I want to sell it to him on the name of blog optimization and this is something that appeals to most of the other marketers as well not just the different marketers if you're selling a local service if you are working for uh, another marketer if you're working for another service you know you want to segment your subscribers know what they actually subscribe to or which, which basically subscribe to draft your sequences in a way that kind of relates to those pages because then the user is also able to relate to the notifications and take an action and then drive them through a funnel to actually sell them something or maybe drive them to an action it could be to book an appointment it could be to to do any action on any web page right okay so, uh, yes <clears throat> Vipo, uh, one thing please stay stay away from the mic with anything because there's there's a lot of interference on the mic um, the, the the question that is asked here is you you have the timer before and after clicked. So yeah. what is the difference by putting the timer before clicked and after clicked? What does that actually, uh, what's the difference actually, between the two? There's, there's actually no difference in putting the timer before clicked and after clicked. Um, if, um, except the part, the essential differences that it might have. If you put the timer, so I mean, you got to run sequentially, right? Um, Okay, so if I look at this sequence at present, I send this notification out, then what this timer does is it is a wait timer. I wait for this time, right? So if I, let's say I have added in five hours, six hours in here, and I save this, um, we're going to wait for six hours before we see that if this notification was actually clicked upon or not, right? So if you add the timer before the clicked option, we are going. We as literary uh, are going to wait for that particular time to see uh, if the notification was clicked upon or not. If we do not add any timer, we're going to generally wait for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. right? However, if you're driving uh, an offer which kind of uh, gets expired in let's say another 24 hours, and you do not want us to actually wait for that long time, you add a timer up in here. Because if you add a timer in here, we're only going to wait for six hours because I know I have gotten the consent from you as a marketer. That I, I got to check if, if it was clicked upon or not in the six hours. And then if you add a timer after the click parameter, I wait for this much time before I send another notification out. Right? Yeah. Sure. So typically um, if you I mean if you go to create a new sequence and if you say that I want to load a pre-built module, that is why we have the two timers in place because I want you to tell me how much how many days or how many how much how many hours do I, I as literates want to wait uh, if you want to send me another notification on automation right so 
Um, I have added six hours here, so Litrix is going to wait. Litrix bot is automatically going to wait for six hours, and and they're going to check for click not click check only after six hours. If you do not add it, we usually wait up to 24 hours because your notifications can get clicks uh, up to and up to 40 hours, right? So that's why. Perfect. Okay, just one other clarification question. Is the second timer waiting from the clicked check or from the original notification before sending the, the next notification? From the click check. We're going to understand this again. This is something that's, that's going to work sequentially, right? So someone sends this notification, we wait for this time, we see if it was clicked or not. If it was not clicked, we wait for another this time, right? So it was, it was we wait from the click check, from the click not click check. So if, if it was um, four hours, one minute, and if it was six hours, ideally someone who doesn't click on this notification, on the first notification, will get the not click notification in 10 hours from getting the first notification. Great, right? thank you for the clarification. Sure. <coughs> Do we have oh, there's just another question. But if we want to send it immediately after the click check, mm -hmm. then you can set the timer, the second timer for zero. Yes, so what you can do is, I would not recommend you to set it as zero. I would recommend you to set it up as one minute. So you set it up as one minute and you click on save. And it was At it least give them one minute. Yeah. So you cannot really do it okay. zero. It's better to set it to one. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. So, uh, Vipul, do you, do you have anything more on the demo? No, just, just the last thing. Uh, in the notification sequence, once you have run uh, the campaign, you have the option to pause the campaign or to start a campaign or you can edit it as well. I am not able to start or pause any of these two campaigns because I have I'm not yet done editing or it entirely. Once I have started a campaign up, I can always click on this button called analytics to see how many people have dropped off at which step, right? So I get to see how many people uh, were sent the notification at the first point, how many views did I generate at what step, and I can go as I think we lost audio. Can you guys still hear Ripple? Hey, if you can still hear Ripple, please put a one in the box. I believe we may have lost him. Lost. Okay. Let's send him a quick message. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, guys. We're going to get Vipul back. I'm not sure what happened on his end, but we're going to message him over and get him back on here. I think we lost him. Okay, guys and gals, apologies. Looks like we have lost Vipul. Uh, he basically was at the end of um, of the demo. I think you guys have probably got a lot of value out of that. And uh, this has been quite a long webinar, so we're going to wrap it up at that rather than trying to pull him back on. It looks like we've lost him entirely. So we're going to um, just give greetings from him to you. Uh, he would love to say goodbye, but but we lost him. So uh, keep in mind we will be going through. Um, yeah, yeah, it's late. <laughs> it's late in India. We will be going through the marketing and selling of LetReach on the next webinar, which is going to be next Tuesday, November. Uh, next Tuesday at the same time. That's going to be eight.
p.m. CET, or if you're in Eastern Standard Time, that's 2 p.m., or do your calculations on your same time, translate. Same time as day, uh, next week. That's on a Tuesday. Uh, we will see you then. If you want to join to learn more about uh, the marketing side, we did get quite a few questions about that that we'll cover in that webinar. Now, what I, what I suggest is that if you have more questions about this, uh, this webinar, uh, please go over to the Facebook uh, um, group and put the questions uh, there where we, uh, we asked you to, uh, to mention uh, those questions, and then we'll get, uh, get that on. Hey guys, I'm back. I heard you, Vipul. I heard you there. You guys hear me now? Okay, Vipul, sorry. Yeah, we've just closed. We've just basically thanked everyone and closed out. Um, I guess if you would just want to say your 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 thank yous and goodbyes, we were just getting ready to close out. They do know about the next webinar coming up next week. All right, sure. Thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. Um, I hope that your questions have been solved around the product part of it. If, if they have not been solved, you could just ping me on Facebook or post your questions on the Facebook group, and and we'll try our best to answer most of them. And if anyway you have any of the feedback or any of the good suggestions for us, you can always drop me a ping. Okay, Eric says uh, thank you, people. Um, so there will be a replay, um, and that means we we have recorded this uh, this webinar. Uh, that is, if GoToWebinar allows us to uh, to to get uh, the webinar downloaded, um, so we'll have, we we can only see once we close out the webinar. Um, the link to the uh, replay will be posted in the Facebook group. So if you guys have not been able to join the webinar completely, or just took uh, took parts of it, uh, you will be able to see the whole webinar um, on the replay. And again, we just want to thank everyone and have a great evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you're at in the world. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Vipul. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Kibali. And thank you, everyone else. Have a great time, Mary. Mm -hmm. So long. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye.